Hey everybody, Last Outrider back, and we're on to part 22, Astral Spectre. The term Spectre covers a variety of entities which have no physical bodies, but which exist primarily within the medium of warp space. They are able to impinge upon the material world only through the activities of psychics. Following the psychic trail either deliberately or being drawn to it unintentionally, unprotected human psychers cannot help but attract these creatures, giving rise to poltergeist activity, apparent insanity, and other weird shit. Spectres have intelligence, but of an older, of an order very different from humans, and in many ways incomprehensible. They have no respect for living creatures, utilizing psychers only to survive. Once divorced from warp space, a specter needs a constant supply of psychic energy, or else it is destroyed. The only way a specter can obtain this energy is to occupy the body, the body of an intelligent living creature, meaning int 5 or above, intelligence 5 or above. Every day that the specter occupies a body, d6 points of the victim's willpower are drained until the body is completely drained and then useless. Abandoned bodies do not die, but become mindless shells. The body of a psyker is more useful to the specter because psi points can be drained as well as willpower. The host cannot replenish psi points lost to the specter and will eventually be drained and abandoned as with other creatures. Is this getting trippy enough for you? One might almost say they prefer this to the chaos crap that's out there now. To manifest within the body of an unprotected psyker, a specter must score more than the psyker's willpower on 2d6. A specter failing to take over a psyker in this way would normally seek a new victim and make one such rule a turn until a suitable host is found. Once again, that means, like the Astral Hounds, they're coming out. They will simply keep trying over and over and over and over again until they pop through. Every turn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Once installed in a material body, the specter may transfer to a new victim by physical contact. New victims need not be unprotected psychers, but can be ordinary psychers or even non-psychers. A further 2d6 test is made against the new victim's willpower for success. A combat hit will suffice to trans for the transfer to take place. A specter acquires a certain amount of knowledge from its host, enabling it to speak the same language and accomplish the same daily routines as the host. Only close friends and relatives would easily spot the change in character. A specter cannot survive in the material universe without a body, and a bodiless specter will be destroyed on the d6 roll of a 6, which is to be made every turn. A specter without a body cannot be harmed in any way. So how about its traits? Well, it has no movement, except for that of the host, obviously. Um, oh, that's interesting. It has no stats of itself, but instead adds to the stats of the host that it is inhabiting. So it adds nothing to movement. It adds two to weapon skill. 
two to ballistic skill, one to strength, one to toughness, one to wounds, one to initiative, one to attack. It has a leadership of 10, an intelligence of 10, and a willpower of 10. Wow. And that means once in a normal body, it can just go into any other body by have, forcing it to make a leadership slash willpower check. And then it will add all of these to that entity's characteristics. So, wow. Wow. You can imagine how insane uh, that could get. The specter's fighting characteristics are derived from its host with the modifiers as I've indicated above. Every day, a specter will draw d6 points of willpower or psi points from its host. If the host has insufficient resources left for the specter, a new host must be found. Disembodied specters are destroyed on the d6 roll of 6, made every turn. Yes, they are repeating themselves. It's not me. This is the writing in the book. If a host body is slain, the specter is automatically slain too. Crazy stuff. Okay, next time we'll talk about enslavers. Bye. Hmm.